What's up guys, Kit here, back with another video. Today for you guys I'm reading the Real Indian is the Negro, aka the Black Moor. I'll leave a link this down in the description box below. Along with email, you can email us at themongs.gmo.com for help for private consultation. And without further ado, let me get right into it. The Real Indian is the Negro, aka the Black Moor. The oldest body found in America is that of a Negroid named Lucy. Lucy. Ancient Crucifix script was employed for the Arabic language before the modern Arabic came into general use. This example dates from approximately 700 AD and occurs in Nevada, USA, where it was mistaken for American Indian markings of about 1000 BC. It is actually a religious text and reads Nabi Allah Muhammad. Allah's prophet is Muhammad. It was probably cut into the rock as part of the permanent school lessons of the Muslim settlers of the Southwest. Sample, sample of words from Saga America by Barry Fell. The origin of, Kuf, of Kufic or the angular style of Arabic script is traced back to about 100 years before the foundation of Kufa 17-8-6-8 CE to which town it owes its name because of its, de because of its development there. Note from S. M. in, 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 Madden, in Madden, Arabic writing and Arab, Arab libraries, 1983. Taha Publishers, London, P/12. The Quara called Krufic script is the earliest Quara, so-called Arabic script, and is related to the family of Muhammad through Ali, Fatima, and Bibliya. Bibliya's descendants moved through Africa to West Africa, present-day Morocco, and across the seas to Americas and left these inscriptions in Nevada at a school established there. The Arabic script, Kat, is the one which is now known as Kufic. From it evolved all the present pens. Note from Ali Ababa's Hamid al Qadashiri Kitab Sal Ashala, 1914, Volume 3. The purpose of this writing is to provide the reader of some of, some of the most important secret secret histories directly related to black people in America that pertain directly to the subject and discussion of reparations slash restorations. Restoration. The forbidden idea ideal in America is what? It is never to allow our nation, black people, to know oh, we are indigenous to the to indigenous to this land. Yes, we were and are an indigenous indigenous nation. This is the history we have not known. This writing is designed to be a study tool and to spark an interest in further scholarly studies on, on our indigenous past and its connection to the reparation slash restoration movement. The records of our past in America are very real. They are prior to any settlement of Europeans who verify this in their records. Negroes as the original Indians proof in the Jesuit letters. The book of the book Africans and Native Americans by Jack Forbes paints a very different picture of history than what most of us were taught about the origins of black people in the Western Hemisphere. We were taught that black people came from Africa as slaves, that the Red Indian was the true Native American, and that white people took black slaves from Africa and stole the land of the Red Indians. This story is nothing but a giant fiction, a novel made up by white historians to deceive the masses about the original history and the peoples of the Americas. Jack Forbes used the letters of the Jesuit missionaries to prove that Negroes or Black Moors were the first Americans and in fact were the black and olive toned people found in the Western Hemisphere. Commentating from the Jesuit letters, Jesuit letters on the appearance of the Native, Native Americans, Forbes states, for example, in 1519 it was said of the Brazilians, non sono neri ne blanchi ma de cola de vidro that they are not black or white but they are of olive color but the same writer remarked that that the brazilian cano canoemen canoemen he saw were so black that they could have been taken for sailors on the sea of sticks in hell the author continues his comments on the appearance of the natives in north america from the jesuit letters in 1524 the carolina coast people were said to be of dark color, not much, not much unlike the Ethiopians. 
the terms Negro and Indios were interchangeably were used interchangeably to describe the natives in the journals of early missionaries who could not have possibly been referring to Africans. From 1549 through 1565, the letters of the Jesuit missionaries in Brazil, usually addressed to colleagues in Portugal or Spain, frequently refers to the Americans as Negroes. In April of, in April of 1549, Manuel de Nobrega, the leader of the Jesuits, addressed a letter from Baja to Simo Rodriguez in Lipson, in which he refers to the Portuguese in Brazil as living in sin because of their having many, many, many Negras and lots of children by the said black woman. Thus the Jesuit father called the American woman living with the Portuguese men Negras, a term which, according to Letite, could have not denoted appeal from Africa because in 1549 there were few or no African Amer American women in Bahia. Nonetheless, Nabria uses the word Indo. When Africans are referred to in the Jesuit letters, they are always called Negros da Laguini, blacks of, Gu of Guena, to distinguish them from Negros da Terra, blacks of the land or Americans. A very interesting letter is one prepared by Dos Menenos de Colorado de Jesus de Balia, that is, by young, Amer by young Americans studying in the school. Diogo Tapanama, Pelerebia Montega, and Condienta. All through, probably edited by a Jesuit, this may represent the first letter written by Americans, Americans in a European language from Brazil. In it, they refer to an American leader, El Grino, as a Negro, and to other natives as Negroes. We find, for example, El Grillo, who is a Negro very well known and feared among them, and that El Grillo is Negro muy grave. El Grillo was at the same time an Indian pagan and a friend of the Portuguese. In August 1552, Nabrega wrote from Bahala, South America, to Lipson, Portugal, referring to the native people native peoples as Negroes. In May 1554, Antonio Lazaquiz from Porto Rico wrote wrote to the Jesuits of Cumbrala, Cumbrala that Yo estoy en este Porto Rico, y la vida who hago y en lo que ocupo es tío. This is what he was preaching to the Americans, Americans, called Negroes. He also referred to the Negroes and Los Mamacalos de Slaterio as pupils. The editor notes that by Negroes and Negras that he met in Indios and Indias. The history recorded by their own white hands bears witness that the black people are indigenous and the first Americans. Americans seem stemming from the intercourse of Vesicupi Ves and Columbus with the indigenous blacks in Central America, Amaru. The, war, the, the use above of Malamakutus to describe the Negroes, which stems back to the Kawara Alagolian Arabic word Malamuk, also shows the indigenous Moorish presence in the Americans. This history spanned from the first encounters of the Europeans with their ancestors to the establishment of the United States of America and the Revolutionary War period. The Dutch artist Jan Verlist Jan Verlist painted these paintings of the so-called Mohawk chiefs who visited London in 1710. The paintings were housed in the Kensington, Pla Kensington Palace, Kensington, which which is an area in Philadelphia named after this palace, held the original name Sachemon. Shaks Shaks Animexum, meaning the black spiritual priests of God, and Shacha Aka Shaka Shaka Akahum. The original name of the Mohawks is Kanin Kinka, which resembles Canaan Israel Folahonians. The center picture is the chief of the Greek Confederate, Tamlichi, and members of his nation in England in 1736. 
having intercourse with James Olakimthi, then Proprietor of the Colony of Georgia. The language of the Indians, aka Negroes, Agalbonian, and Arabic are essentially the same language which goes back to Medu Netter hieroglyphics. The ear the ear the epigraphic society occasional publications ancient Arabic script and vocabulary of the Alagolian Indians Barifel or Agigas Muslim Harvard University while examining the Alagolian materials in the Peabody Museum Call collection at Harvard University my attention was drawn by Mr. Joseph Geramo Dremo to an old birch bark manuscript labeled as one of the as the Cree origin, carrying two horizontal lines of script script lettered in black. The script I was mystified to observe is that of the ancient Arab city of Palamara in Syria, a vi arrival of Rome, totally destroyed by the Emperor Alarius in. 272 AD. The script found on the st on the stills in the ruins of Palamaria was deciphered in modern t in modern lines in modern times. It and it seems inconceivable that any sea Indian could have become acquainted with it a century ago. When the birch bark text was written, I therefore made an, an investigation on the, of the matter. Nan, Nanticoke Moors Lu people, the tree tribe of the Wapakini Federation of Moors, was the was the Delaware of Lunalabi. Were they black people and are African Americans the descendants of these Moors? William Penn Eyewitness Account of Lynn Pye, Nan Nanticoke Moors. The first detailed detailed description of the Delawares is a letter from William Penn to the Committee of the Free Society of Traders in 1683. He wrote, For the persons, they are generally tall, straight, well-built, and of singular proportion. They tread strong and clever, and mostly walk with a lofty chin, of complexion black, but by design, the gypsies in England. They grease themselves with bears, fat clarified, and using no defense against sun or weather, their skins must be swarthy. Source: William Penn to the Committee of the Free Society of Traders in 1683. Chief Tanamoon, the Black, the Blackamoor, Chief of Turtle Island, Shakamixum, Philadelphia. Sons of Saint Tammy, A.K.A. Sons of Liberty, worship. A Moorish chief. Sir, as all nations have seven centuries past adopted from great performage, remarkable for his virtues and love for civil and religious liberty, as the Tertullian saint and annually enfembled on a fixed day to, co to com commend him, com him, the natives of this flourishing province determined to follow for laudable an example for four years past have adopted a great warrior, Sachin, and chief named Saint Tammy, a fate friend to our forefathers, to be the learner saint of this province, and have here Thirito on the first of May done the accustomed honors to the memory of for great and celebrated of a foreign age, and for the same purpose you are requested to meet the children and the associated sons of St. Tammy on Saturday next at the buffet of, of Mr. James Burns to dine together and form such fruitful charitable plans for the relief of all dill trees as shall be agreed on. To John Duckenhamley, I think it says, it's signed here. The three branches system was copied from the more so-called Delaware Len Pai, Nanticoke Moors of America, Anime Executive Chief Enforcers, Wenasai Justitio Interper in Interpreters, Alakakanu Legislative Fifty Women Oral Oral Law Traditions, Chief Black Hawk or Mat Matakat 
Tsimikashaya. Chief Black Hawk, Hawk was the chief of the Sarik Sakai. His birth date is not known. His the name Black Hawk is reminiscent of the Black Hawk or Fountain of Kemetic tradition, representing Horus, her the resurrected son of, or, of resurrected son of Osiris, the Anointed One. Black Hawk was born Me Mintekai Mishekea. Masekea is the Hebrew word for Messiah. Literally means the Anointed One, as we can see this is part of his name. His, his last public appearance was ironically July 4th, 1837, a special day in ancient Moorish Israelite Egyptian culture in respect to his astronomical science. His attire in his painting is very Moorish in tradition. The Black Hawk was a terror for the whites in the 1800s and is a part of of legacy of black people who have been written off under red in Indian history and disassociated and disassoci and disassociated from black people as their literal ancestors of which they are. The resemblance to the Honorable Allah Muhammad is strikingly similar. United States allegedly allegedly for the purpose of exploring the unknown territory from the western edge of the of the colonies to the Pacific. The, two, the true intention was to spy on the indigenous black people who were in America prior to the European invasion and colonization. Captain Merriweather, Lewis, and Lieutenant William Clark of the United States Army used a black man named York, who was, who was also the son of Yusuf bin Ali, along with, along with a native woman named Cisanesisi Tsakakwania found on the millennial edition of the dollar with her son Jean Basispite Charbonneau to be their in interpreters as they gathered intelligence. In the book Return of the Ancient Ones, Empress Tahara Veracini in Washington reports, Lewis and Clark documented, uh, documented everything in sight. The weather, the plants, the rocks, the minerals found, the people by tribe, the habits, the color, by warlike activities, and it was documented a bushy-headed tribe who did not like the red man or the white man, the black bushy-headed Washitas. Now, please explain why history did not make us aware of this important fact. Because it was, it was because they went to spy on the Washitas, a people that the good old United States had signed to be their protect, protectorates over their rights, their land, and their property. John simply reports in the Lewis and Clark documents. Shock Taw. There are ram they are rambling hunting parties of them to be met with all over Louisiana. They are at war with the Calibres and liked by neither the red nor the white people. April. To the right is Mah Mahiska, another chief with an Aramic Hebrew name. Majiska means the one of man horns, as a painting shows, and it represented his chiefdom. He and his father were recorded to have been in 18 battles with the United States and never lost one. He and his father were allies of the Black Hawk or Mataka Messiah. He traveled with his father to Washington D.C. in 1824 to meet with President to meet with President John Quincy Adams. The Secretary of State was Henry Clay. These these two, Adams and Clay, were later ordered by Abdur Rahman Inman Hishtim to release Abraham Ilbisori, Prince of the Slaves, in 1828. Abraham had been touring all over the West speaking with these chiefs about the laws that were being used to free him under the Moorish status. Moorish, Moorish status. In the 1840s, the government made, in, made many treaties with Native Americans and land deals in Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Kansas. John Quintman and Eliza Terenka, the father, the father and the mother of Noble Drali, among many other family members, were a part of these transactions and interactions. After the Lewis Clark spy mission, the United States brought 59 European families into the, into the Louisiana Territory under the guard of the United States Army. The military poisoned the water supply with the intent of murdering off the original indigenous black population. They brought their school curriculum, curriculums as they enslaved and murdered the black populations, making claims that they 
the indigenous peoples, were fugitives from justice under, con under constitutional law, and they were European property from Africa. However, the people did not consider themselves by nationality or status, or status as Africans until after this was, was breeded into them. The indigenous people in African did not originally call themselves Africans. They were Tamari and were Moors. The word African is a word of white colonizer. There is evidence of this deceptive activity to falsify our status that is undeniable. It was a part of a plan to wipe out our indigenous history in America. The names like Tunica and Washita were tuned into Turner and Washington. Wars with Moors 1752 so-called French and Indian wars were between the Moors, Black Knight Templar families and Reparational Moors versus, versus British colon, colonialists and Great Britain. In 1776, the sons of, of St. Tamari allied with the Moors to fight against the British colonialists and Great Britain. Some of the British colonialists infiltrated the Moors and Sons of Liberty, aka Sons of St. Tamari, in order to overthrow the Moors. They were people like Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Andrew Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, Moors, Moors til, tilted, by, tilted Negroes by the United States. Statements from General Thomas Jess Jessup. This, you may be assured, is a Negro, not an Indian war. And if it not be speedily put down, the South will feel the effects of it on the, on the slave population before the end of the next season. Major General Jessup, June 1837, in American State Papers, Military Affairs, cited in Kenneth W. Porter, The Negro on American Frontier, New York, 1971. If the war be carried out, it must be necessarily be one of extermination. We have, at no former period in our history, had to contend of so familiar, had to contend of so formidable, formidable an, an, an enemy. No Seminole provides false to his country, nor has a single instance ever occurred, ever occurred of a first-rate warrior having surrendered. I B I D. Throughout, many, uh, throughout my operations, I have found the Negroes the most active and determined warriors. And during the con conferences with the Indian chiefs, I asserted and they exercised an almost controlling influence over them. The Negroes rule the Indians. Many of the original black inhabitants began to flee from Western territory, and many inhabitants sought refuge in Florida and some went further west to California and mingled with other uninfected indigenous populations. In 1860, a U.S. colonial named Duncan, Sh Duncan Clinch led an army into Florida to destroy what is called the Black Fort or Fort Negro. Colonial Duncan Clinch led an army of, of Red Creek mercenaries and a U.S. army unit into Florida to destroy Fort Negro in a book called The Black West by William Katz. Katz reports, the explosion killed almost all of its black and red warriors and 200 women and children. The, full war, the few warriors were led back into the United States and slavery. In his initial orders, General Jackson had asked that they not only destroy the fort but return the stolen Negroes and property to their original orders. But the question remains, did these Aboriginals see themselves as slaves, foreigners, or property of the Europeans as Africans, Negroes, or colored peoples? No. In Colonel Duncan's Clitch report of the, of the Battle of Fort Negro, the first U.S. invasion of Florida, the information provides facts to the contrary. Colonial Clinch, Clinch's report reads, Fort Negro, 1816. In the evening, in the evening a deputation of chiefs went into the fort and demanded and demanded its surrender but they were abused and treated with the utmost contempt contempt the black chief heaped much abuse on the americans and said that he had been left in command of the fort by Brit by british government and that he would sink any american vessels that should attempt to pass it and would blow up the fort if he could not defend it the chief also informed me that the negroes had a red flag and the english jack was flying over it the question that must be answered is, were these people former slaves? What was their purpose for flying the two flags they were flying? Slaves do not have flags. A flag represents a nation. When a nation what nation do they represent? 
There were cannons in use in Fort Negro. It is a well-known fact in history that the cannon was developed by the Moors in North Africa and Spain. The, the Moors had not only made the fire stick as mentioned above, but even cannon forged from wrought from what iron. The two flags represented Great Britain and the indigenous Moors Empire. They represented a nation of indigenous Moors. This is the same Islamic empire in the east that Abdu Bakari, brother of Mansa Musa, was under when he brought 400 ships to America in 1311 AD. Is this the flag that chief was flying at the, at the Black Fort in Florida in 1816? Is there a continuous Moorish connection from 1311 with arrival of Moors from the East that is documented in Africa and America until 1816? The documented states from the presence of contemporary Eastern Moors go as far back as 700 AD. As we have shown with the inscriptions found from, each, from an ancient Nevada school bearing the name of Muhammad as the Prophet of Allah. In the book entitled, The Holy Quran, Circle 7, prepared by Noble Drelli, Ali asked the question, What kind of flag is Moorish? It is a red flag with a five-pointed green star in the center. The Moorish flag, as presented, as presented by Noble Drelli. There is a, a unified story that George Washington took down the original Moorish Islamic flag in America and locked it in a safe at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. It was allegedly a part of his efforts to destroy any knowledge of Islam amongst black people in the building in the budding American nation. Allegedly, it was not retrieved until Noble Drali was given the flag by high decree Shriners in the 1920s. The Moorish flag was actually dismantled in 1816 from Fort Negro by Colonial Dun Duncan Clinch and General Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson. The star was added by the colonizing French authority to the Mora Shahriftin flag, Morocco, on November 17, 1915, after France's colonial occupation began. Before this period, it was a completely red flag. It represented the Muslim slash Moors of the Maghrib, West Africa, and the Americans, who were traveling back and forth from Africa to America, who were established as in indigenous to both lands. Many of the Maroons, who are amongst the natives we call Seminoles, were Muslims slash Moors who had an ancient presence in America. The chief of this fort was called Fort Negro and was a man with Mandi descent. The Mandi were are West African Muslims. Mandi groups founded the medieval empires of the Ghan, Ghana, and Mali. They include the Brahaba, Dahula, Malakaik, Mandi, Dogon, and Sink. The chief at Fort Negro during the invasion of Colonial Clinch was named Abraham. His birth name was Solefi Tunsikagi, which meant Sohani warrior and has been associated with the Soroni River in Florida. The Moorish Mandi Arabic word Sunhunfe means powerful spirit. The, the Tudeskeski means warrior. The, this chief who had a Moorish heritage, most like most like like most of the Maroons in Florida, was not a former slave. His descendancy went back to indigenous peoples. Abraham served as an in, in, interpreter for the Seminoles as and as legal counselor for Himena Miko, John Jumper, and Colesta My, Micro, Ch Chief Billy Bowlegs. Hima Miko was the Seminole chief. His brother Holata Miko was also a chief. Abraham served as a representative on their trip to Washington, D.C. to negotiate a treaty with the United States government in 1832. So, so only Tuzinski was also known as Ab Abraham, was a Maroon or a Mu amongst the Seminoles. He was their chief legal counsel and interpreter. He was also, you know, he, it was he who was at Fort Negro in 1816, flying the Moorish flag of the Islamic empires. This is the famous cherry tree that was chopped down. Abraham soon moved west to Oklahoma and Chief Yotola Micro and Hima Himahea Micro disappeared in the Everglades. This was the start of Pin's secret society and other secret societies amongst the Crete and Chorokodi. These are these are these are the societies that later developed into the ancient Egyptian Arabic order of the nobles of the mystic shrine 
and the more size Temple of America. All right, I made it off here, guys. I'm gonna make a part two to this. I should make it pretty soon. Um, I'll leave a link to down in the description box below, along with our email. You can email us at themonos.gmo.com for private consultation. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.